Scott, your company, Brain Candy, obviously deals a lot with user-generated content. How is allowing user-generated content important or influential when it comes to branding or entertainment? Well, the, the interesting thing about this is that this user-generated content from fans in the creative community is already happening and has been happening for decades, if not centuries, around properties that they like. So the question that property owners have to ask themselves is, what am I going to do about that? Do right. I ignore it? Do I legislate it to death? Or do I find a way to give these fans a, an official path to creating canon content and potentially making money from the content they create around the properties that they love? We're at a crossroads at the entertainment section as far as what do we do about this thing called the internet, digital piracy, uh, basically drowning in a sea of content where users have so many choices. What does an entertainment property owner do? And one of the things they can do under our model is figure out a way to harness the interest, the attention by the community at large and give them ways to participate meaningfully with the property in ways that the property owner benefits beyond simple advertising and marketing benefits. So you can either sue like Viacom did, YouTube, mm -hmm. or you can learn to collaborate with an audience that's already there and is already doing this. Um, it, it basically boils down to a partnership. How do you view your consumers? Are they an opponent that you have to take to court, or are they potentially a peer partner where you can co-create with them? And if you open the model up uh, and the property up under the right conditions, the property owner doesn't have to give up branding or editorial control. Right. Everybody can win. And that's sort of the model that you have founded under Brain Candy. Correct. Correct. Um, what are the various ways that studios or networks can incorporate user-generated content? I mean, there's got to be a slew of ways. What are some of the examples out there? Well, what you'll see right now, right, uh, for example, ARGs, alternate reality games, are very popular as a marketing device in a pre-launch uh, campaign up mm -hmm. to a particular product. Could be a movie, could be a video game. They've been around for about a decade. They were started by Jordan Weissman with the beast for Steven Spielberg's AI. They are essentially cost centers and they are one-time playable entities. They cannot be repeated or they really won't be repeated by the player because they've solved the puzzle and the mystery is already done or the product's been released. So one of the things that I think can happen is that user-generated content can be used as a way to create a persistent, ongoing, monetizable, growing property where both the property owner and the community at large contribute to it. So being in the community and being a co-creator of content or, or participating, what is the value proposition for me? Is it just fun? Well, I would say that the value proposition is different depending on who you are because lots of people are creating content for free and throwing it up on the internet with, with no expectation of monetization. Some people are doing it hoping that there'll be a monetization down the road, whether mm -hmm. it be in the form of my script got bought or my company got bought or I got funding, something along or those lines. Or my advertisement. Correct. Now, advertising obviously is a, is a huge component and is probably the first thing people think about when they're talking about online content. Mm -hmm. The more content I have, the more eyeballs I'll get, the more advertising dollars I'll have. This obviously allows a new revenue stream for property owners beyond what they're currently doing. So who is a forward thinker in this space in terms of allowing your audience to co-create certain aspects or riff off of what's already out there? Are there any studios or any networks that are actually trying this? I would say that at the industry level there still seems to be a strong reticence based I think purely on legal frameworks that the current model with the litigious uh, environment that we have, mm -hmm. the current model basically wants the entertainment property owners to say, I don't want to have to give credit or money to anyone, and I want to retain full ownership because if I don't, I'm opening up the door to a huge slew of lawsuits. However, what I'm seeing is that certain companies are beginning to explore with this and say, we're going to release our content and we're going to encourage and invite people to play with the content, to mm -hmm. repurpose it, remix it, remash it, make it their own, and then contribute that back to the internet. Most of them still stop short of monetary compensation. Most of them stop short of some type of a credit or a canon type approach. But a few companies are beginning to do this. However, at the industry level, there still seems to be a large reticence to do that. And I view it mostly from a legal perspective. And it's not a creative issue per se. So the it's major roadblock is legal, legality of it. That's what I keep hearing when I talk to the large media companies. It is the lawyers will never go for this. This will never get past legal. There are creative concerns, but the biggest roadblock that I see right now to true collaboration is the legal aspect. So say I'm a writer, I write TV show. If the studio opens up that platform to people contributing and whatnot, doesn't that put my job at Jeopardy? It certainly can. That's a good incentive for you to be the best writer you can be. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, can, we can basically talk about the internet and say, 
this is bad, digital piracy is bad, things are changing, dissonant media. I mean, these, t these types of arguments have been going on for 10 years. Or you can say, we're going to reinvent ourselves. We're, we're going, going to find new models. Correct. We're going to leverage the strength of the internet and what the user community is already doing. When you look at YouTube, and this is not to disparage what's on YouTube, the most popular videos are not necessarily the ones that most entertainment companies would want to create themselves and offer to the public. And yet, they're getting lots of hits. So that tells you that there's a, there's a, a draw by the creative community and by the people around the world to certain content that could be monetizable through ad dollars or some other model that would not normally find its way through the entertainment uh, property line. Gotcha. Thanks, Scott. Thank you.